What was something your family did that you didn't realize wasn't normal until you did it in front of others? I'm the eldest of seven, and we are a super close-knit family, and always have been. Even when I was one and my first sister was born, as far as I was concerned she was my little baby doll and I loved taking care of her. We went through a lot as a family around the time the youngest two, twins, were born because of medical difficulties. So I used to sometimes write little letters of encouragement to my siblings, telling them I loved them, and to hang in there. They could reread them any time they needed it, this slightly predates laptops slash phones being ubiquitous. My sister and I went to a sailing camp late high school, and we ended up on different boats. We were expecting a working sail school, but a lot of the other kids were apparently expecting more a cruise. They were mostly really snobby rich kids from New York and they were kind of as holes. They didn't want to lift a finger to clean, cook, or actually keep the boat moving in the right direction, had a few scary experiences as a result. But my sister is pretty sensitive, and apparently she was being outright bullied on her boat. One of the older boys was literally calling her thunder thighs, and she was by no means overweight, though it would be just as bad if she were. Apparently she cried every night, when she was alone point we didn't see each other very often, and only had a few minutes to hang out when we landed on islands. She didn't tell me specifics the first time we stopped, but I could tell something was off, and she wasn't having fun, so when we were back on the ships, I wrote her a note of encouragement someone asked what I was doing, and I casually said writing my sister a love note, and he was like oh ah, you in love with your sister? And it was the tone of voice, where you've just realized you're talking to an insane person and you're trying to stay cool to assess how insane they are. It was shocking, and kind of humiliating, and it was so out of left field I didn't even know how to respond for a second. Especially because I'm also female, and girls slash sisters can be more affectionate with each other, and it's not usually weird point I don't know why, but it still really bothers me his mind immediately went to that place, and everyone kind of avoided me slightly more after that. I was pretty over the trip at that point, so I didn't mind everyone leaving me alone. Grew up in a bit of a weird household, mom definitely has some sort of paranoid slash histrionic issues and mental illness runs in her side of the family so there were a lot of anachronisms in my childhood here are a few. You can never open windows or the blinds on the windows in bedrooms keep them shut, or people can see into the house, and will steal you point didn't know salt could go on food until college mind equals blown, being verbally slash mentally. Physically abused by your parents to toughen you up because you didn't have siblings who would have done so. Thinking it was normal for moms to get so mad at you for using up the last of the flour or turning on the oven that they would throw things at you, call you selfish and ungrateful, hit the walls, say they wish they never adopted you, etc, only to tearfully apologize hours later and say that they were a horrible mom. And you had to console them into being okay at like age 15 not being allowed to leave the house almost ever. Except for sports and one activity with a friend on weekends. If I did leave the house I had to text or call to check in at 30 minute increments or risk being yelled at mercilessly took me a while to break from that one as an adult still feel like I have to text my mom sometimes when I'm going to the grocery store point I managed to get physically independent at around 20. I'm 23 now, about to start a masters, and I'm almost fully financially independent slash in. Therapy mayo. Playing the naked game point I was born in Berlin, Germany just after the fall of the Berlin Wall. At that time there were government subsidies to increase population and provide support to new families. Couples were provided with a few thousand dollars per year if they had up to two kids. I think maybe 4k but not certain. In addition families were provided with a child psychologist slash family counselor. One of the common suggestions in Germany at the time was to have the children spend a lot of time naked as a family. This would create positive body image and generally help the children gain confidence. One hour before bed was the recommended amount of time point the naked game was what we would play to start naked time. My brother and I would take turns trying to run as close to either my mom or dad as possible without getting caught. Our parents would lie on the ground with their eyes closed, 
If they caught us, they would take off one sock, then the other, then shirt, etc. Once me and my brother were naked we would run around the house like maniacs dancing to Bob Sedger, Nora Jones, or whatever else my parents put on. We'd also read a book, then bath time, and bed point to clarify, I haven't played the naked game since I was a child. But it is what made me comfortable being naked around others. When I entered college in America and let it all hang out for the first couple weeks I finally got reprimanded by some others on my corridor in the dorm. They thought it was offensive how often they were forced to see me naked. I explained the naked game and they thought that was even more weird point it's one of my favorite memories from childhood and I'll do it with my kids too. I recognize it sounds odd though. Establish boundaries I'm not even kidding. It should be normal yet somehow isn't in my area point my parents were great. They disciplined me when necessary and made sure I stayed away from anything that wasn't age appropriate. Only going to those when I was older as it should be point then I went over to neighbors houses on play dates with their kids. Goodness. Their kids had zero discipline and were allowed to run riot as they pleased. They were behaving badly despite being told not to throwing tantrums after being told no, breaking all their toys, it was ridiculous. Basically, their parents never gave their kids consequences for bad behavior and had not told them no before, so they thought it was okay to behave like that and were unable to cope with being told no point and this was the same in every single household point. If I behaved badly I went on the naughty step to think about what I'd done and apologize. If the other kids misbehaved, they were just told don't do that and took no notice of it. In fact, other parents thought my mom was abusive for putting me on the naughty step. It's literally just a time out. How is that abusive? A little humiliating for sure, but not outright abusive point. But then there was one neighbor who really took the cake. They barely watched their kids. They also decided it was a good idea to let their 10 year old son play Assassin's Creed point Assassin's Creed. At 10 point do you know why that's rated an 18? Because it's violent, yes, but also because it's hard. It's aimed at adults. A 10 year old will have more than a little trouble with it, since he doesn't have an adult mind yet. Because he'd been allowed to play it too early, he unsurprisingly found it difficult and developed a ton of anger issues because of it. He was punching his sister, and also my sister, which upset both of them. If he failed a mission, he screamed at us. Eventually, he got so mad that he punched the TV and broke it. Point did he face consequences? Of course not. They just bought him a bigger better TV. They also continued to allow him to play the very game which caused all these issues in the first place. Point I tended to get quite upset at this house since I was seeing stuff I shouldn't and getting stuck around this violent kid. I eventually told my parents what was happening and they stopped us from going there. They thought that maybe it would be okay if he was invited over to ours instead, since over at us he wasn't exposed to Assassin's Creed as we didn't have it. We were told to tell our parents if anything happened point he broke our Wii I remotes. We'd made the mistake of allowing him onto the Wii I, thinking that it would be fine because he was playing a game that was child friendly and therefore easier, but he couldn't get the hang of it and threw our remotes against the wall, breaking them permanently. He was immediately sent home and was angry and crying because it was pretty much his first time facing consequences. He couldn't understand why destroying someone else's property wasn't okay. He thought it wasn't normal to face consequences for bad behavior and he couldn't handle it. His parents also didn't think it was fair, but took him home when my parents insisted. After that, we stopped seeing him and had to shell out money on new Wii remotes. Sorry this was a long post, but it was all a rather complicated situation. Point TLDR. Kids didn't get punished for misbehavior, so thought it wasn't normal to face consequences and their parents thought mine were abusive for giving us timeouts. One neighbor's kid faced zero repercussions for behavior including breaking his TV and was allowed to play an 18 rated game when he was 10, causing lots of anger issues. My family poops big. Maybe it's genetic, maybe it's our diet, but everyone births giant logs of crap. If anyone has laid a mega poop, you know that sometimes it won't flush. It lays across the hole in the bottom of the bowl and the vortex of draining water merely gives it a spin as it mocks you point growing up. This was a common enough occurrence that our family had a poop knife. 
It was an old rusty kitchen knife that hung on a nail in the laundry room, only to be used for that purpose. It was normal to walk through the hallway and have someone call out hey, can you get me the poop knife, I thought it was standard kit. You have your plunger, your toilet brush, and your poop knife point fast forward to 22. It's been a day or two between poops, and I'm over at my friend's house. My friend was a local dealer and always had guests over, because you can't buy weed without sitting on your ass and sampling it for an hour. I excuse myself and lay a gigantic turd. I look down and see that it's a sideways one, so I crack the door and call out for my friend. He arrives and I ask him for his poop knife, my, what, your, poop knife, I say, I need to use it, please, what, the fuck is a poop knife, obviously, he has one, but maybe he calls it by a more delicate name, a fecal cleaver, a dung divider, a guano glaive, I explain what it is I want, and why I want it point he starts giggling, then laughing, then lots of people start laughing. It turns out, the music stopped and everyone heard my pleas through the door. It also turns out that none of them had poop knives, it was just my faked up family with their faked up bowels. FML point I told this to my wife last night, who was amused and horrified at the same time. It turns out, that she did not know what a poop knife was, and had been using the old rusty knife hanging in the utility closet as a basic utility knife. Thankfully she didn't cook with it, but used it to open Amazon boxes she will be getting her own utility knife now. Edit, common question, why was this not in the bathroom instead of the laundry room? Answer, we only had one poop knife, and the laundry room was central to all three bathrooms. I have no idea why we didn't have three poop knives. All I know is that we didn't. We had the one. Possibly because my father was notoriously cheap about the weirdest things. So yes, we shared our poop knife. A few things stand out, not so much I did in front of others more the weirdness of it to me when I started, having sleepover at mates houses my parents stayed together for us kids, they barely spoke and merely coexisted in the same house, my father slept on the sofa for at least 5 years, before they finally separated, when I was 14, I'm the youngest so waited for, when they deemed me old enough. Staying at friends houses and seeing their parents being affectionate to each other, their children and sharing a bedroom was so bizarre to me. Parents that did stuff with and for you. My school days were filled with constant embarrassment of not having any help with stuff. I had to go to the supermarket to get all the stuff I needed for home ec class and when we had to make stuff like Christmas hats mine was always embarrassing sheet compared to the intricate designs my classmates had. And don't even get me started on school play costumes. I was always the narrator, so I didn't need anything special. Thank you Mr. Rowlings. Friends who consider their mums their best friends and have a really close bond. Actually how sheet my mother is has tightened most of their bonds as friends will appreciate this much more and how lucky they are when they hear some of my stories god. Sorry these are all quite depressing sounding. Don't worry I'm good with it all, and appreciate all my mates parents who have adopted me as one of their own. Not go to the dentist point I had a rotten tooth pulled when I was 4 or 5, and a free cleaning at the mall when I was 7, bring a toy to donate. I was in disbelief when my friends were talking about hating going to the dentist for checkups and cleanings. I thought only adults did that, because my mom always went. When I asked her if I could go to the dentist she helped at me, we couldn't afford it. When I was 11 I showed here a literal hole in the side of my adult molar. She didn't care and once again said we can't afford it point when was 18 and long gone from home. I found an amazing dentist who allowed me to make payments direct to him. I needed 4 root canals but could only afford one. Ended up pulling 2 in addition to my wisdom teeth. Countless fillings on every molar. The hygienist that cleaned my teeth was literally chipping the plaque away. At 27 I got braces to fix my crowded teeth. A few years ago I finally got the second root canal. I have spent at least 20k on my teeth point my son will never be treated like that. He's been going since his first tooth, has his teeth cleaned every 6 months, yearly exams, and a sonica toothbrush point I'm 42 and still dealing with dental issues from 18 years of neglect. Thankfully I finally have dental insurance. 
My parents both grew up lower middle class in rural farming communities, and even though they both make very good money, moms is in it, and dad is an engineer, they still do a lot of things to save money which they don't need to do, especially when it comes to reusing things typically intended for single use. Point one of those is my mom would always wash and reuse plastic zip top bags used to keep food fresh. The only possible exception was if it was previously used to store or meat. When I first started dating my husband I was shocked to see he bought zip top bags in bulk because I couldn't fathom how you could go through so many like ever. One box of gallon bags would last my family years and you never grabbed a new one unless there weren't any reused ones available. I never said anything about it to him directly though. One day after I had moved in with him, I was washing one of the bags out while doing dishes like mom always did and he asked what I was doing. I explained and he was like why would you ever do that? It was one of the first times he looked at me like I was absolutely nuts, but far from the last, lol point side note, I mentioned this story to a coworker one time and he looked thoughtful for a second and says well, washing and reusing them seems like a real good idea to me. So maybe I'm not all that weird. Not me, wife's family. They all kiss each other on the lips when greeting and saying goodbye. I cannot express how weird it was to see 50 to 60 year old brothers kissing each other on the lips to say hello the first time I met her extended family. Even non-blood family kiss each other on the lips, also not just immediate family. Second cousins, estranged aunts, doesn't matter. Pick her up. I'm the weird one in the family because I only kiss people on the cheeks and that took years for me to get comfortable. There is one family member who will not accept my check kiss and grabs my face for the lip kiss, mother-in-law. My wife grew up thinking all families kissed on the lips. I swear a piece of my soul departs every time. Not that I mind same sex kissing or kissing in general bothers me, I just have a couple of issues. I come from a family where physical contact between brothers usually ended up in violence. We are not an emotional slash touchy family. I can literally count every time my father hugged me. I have three brothers, if one of them tried to kiss the other one, there would be a black eye point I'm a massive germaphobe, I don't even like shaking hands, let alone uncle Jeb sloppy cigarette smelling smoochie that's what they call back quote the kiss, come over here and give uncle Jeb a smoochie, wait, maybe I'm the one flipped here, is this normal, do most families kiss on the lips, as a 20 something female, do you greet your old uncle, whom you see once a year, with a smoochie? I have a few, having to have the sheetiest birthday cakes from Tesco and Orchin, very similar store chain, nothing personal in presents, like my parents would buy me clothes as presents, or useful things, but nothing personal, like my ex's mother made me a recipe book, made out of an ISA notebook, still you sad to this day, I use that family as a comparison, because they were way better off, they still were more modest point spending the weekends in the house. Yes, we didn't have much money, yet we had to keep to cars, they still do, but mostly using public transport, because they can't afford to maintain them, when we went hiking it meant an hour walk walked in such a slow time frame, that an old lady with a walking frame, would outwalk my parents, and that was occasional too. No museums, they're not free, but not that expensive in my country, no parades, unless it was our national days, but even then, limited time, no concerts, no movies, nothing really. When stayed in, nothing was really done together, even though my grandpa gifted us with a DVD player, we only had a few DVDs, three that was for me, the rest was for my parents, a bit more VHS cassettes, and also my father hated playing anything other than chess or sequence, that card game with a board, so we rarely played out each other. My mother was a bit more open, so I could play some more card games with her but not much. Basically not having fun in any shape, and definitely nothing for children. No idea what will I do with mine, when they grew up point hate of anything from the west. No Disney stuff. We had Cinderella and Snow White, but in VHS from the Soviet era. No mainstream cardboard games, Gazd or Kajokazan. For Hungarians was the only game that was somewhat known, but it only exists in Hungary. When I grew up I bought a few cardboard games for them. I mentioned before, having two cars, although not being able to afford them, so getting not so good, used cars which are always broke down. My ex's family of six had only one car, and they were fine. 
The public transport in Budapest is excellent. There are major stops near to my parents' house, so they don't need the cars so much. It was also normalized to pretend to be rich, rather than be happy, and have an okay life with what we have got. Point furthermore, having two of everything. We have two flats open together. We have two cars. But, one of each is on my mother's name, one of each is on my father's name. Until my father's debt was too high, and they signed his flat to my name, so they could not take it away. They aren't married, and that was for the sake if they depart, and it was taken kinda like a threat, even though they are together for 25 plus years, my father asking for money, which sadly I gave to him in the first time, took him forever to give me back. He then tried to say that the first ever payment I receive is this. I told him no. If they ask me to contribute I would, but he just wanted to take my entire first paycheck point being my parents, especially my father Solbin, the person who they tell all their problems to. He cried to me how sheet was his relationship to my mother and his job problems. He was mostly unemployed. I even helped to find him jobs, but he was feeling some jobs we found him were beneath him, regardless of how much we needed the money. Weird habits I picked up from my mother, peeing with the door open point eating ice cream out of a coffee, mug point eating a lemon with salt on it as a snack, revisited this a few years ago, and really faked up the enamel on my teeth, taking a long bath, and reading a book in it on a nighty basis, no longer do this, haven't got the time, eating meals in bed point cutting off slices of cheese, and eating it as a snack point chewing. On ice, just a cup full of ice point possibly normal, but saving all the extra napkins you get from fast food to use later. Staying up and sleeping in super late, mom was an insomniac, and on disability my entire life, so literally had no schedule. I find myself slipping back into this habit on weekends, or when I have time off work. I've had a week off work, and have literally stayed up until 4am every night, and woke up around 1pm each day, also, only realized this a few years ago, but never spending money on things I want. We were poor growing up, due to the aforementioned disability, only income was her disability checks, and always pinching pennies. I got nice things on my birthday and Christmas, but that was it. I didn't realize that as an adult, when you work full time, make good money, don't have kids, and have two incomes, that I could actually buy things whenever I wanted them. I always felt guilty to buy myself something when there was no reason, like no holiday or something. My husband has had to tell me for years, it's your money, you earned it, you can spend it. I'm still very frugal, and I save most of my money, also from being so poor growing up. I'm insanely worried about having savings to fall back on, but I do buy myself things now, sometimes, without feeling guilt. Big purchases, over $100, still give me pause, though point I keeping thinking of more, and coming back to edit this Mayo. My childhood was really weird in a lot of ways, only child to a single parent with undiagnosed, until a few months before she died, schizoaffective disorder. We were really close, but she was also very abusive and crazy. And we were very isolated from most family and she never had many friends. This is weird looking back too, so no one was ever around to comment on the weirdness lol. My family poops big. Maybe it's genetic, maybe it's our diet, but everyone births giant logs of crap. If anyone has laid a mega poop, you know that sometimes it won't flush. It lays across the hole in the bottom of the bowl and the vortex of draining water merely gives it a spin as it mocks you point growing up. This was a common enough occurrence that our family had a poop knife. It was an old rusty kitchen knife that hung on a nail in the laundry room, only to be used for that purpose. It was normal to walk through the hallway and have someone call out hey, can you get me the poop knife? I thought it was standard kit. You have your plunger, your toilet brush, and your poop knife point fast forward to 22. It's been a day or two between poops, and I'm over at my friend's house. My friend was a local dealer and always had guests over, because you can't buy weed without sitting on your ass and sampling it for an hour. I excuse myself and lay a gigantic turd. I look down and see that it's a sideways one, so I crack the door and call out for my friend. He arrives and I ask him for his poop knife, my, what, your, poop knife, I say, I need to use it, please, what, the fuck is a poop knife, obviously, 
He has one, but maybe he calls it by a more delicate name. A fecal cleaver? A dung divider? A guano glaive? I explain what it is I want, and why I want it point he starts giggling. Then laughing. Then lots of people start laughing. It turns out, the music stopped and everyone heard my pleas through the door. It also turns out that none of them had poop knives, it was just my faked up family with their faked up bowels. FML point I told this to my wife last night, who was amused and horrified at the same time. It turns out that she did not know what a poop knife was and had been using the old rusty knife hanging in the utility closet as a basic utility knife. Thankfully she didn't cook with it, but used it to open Amazon boxes she will be getting her own utility knife now. Edit, common question, why was this not in the bathroom instead of the laundry room? Answer, we only had one poop knife, and the laundry room was central to all three bathrooms. I have no idea why we didn't have three poop knives. All I know is that we didn't. We had the one. Possibly because my father was notoriously cheap about the weirdest things. So yes, we shared our poop knife. Not me, but my friend's parents point my best friend's parents were super controlling, but only when home. He would look for appreciation from his dad and his dad would ask him if he was a dog. When he got disciplined his dad would literally throw him into walls. And then his parents, who were part of Amway at the time, would leave the state for meetings they would leave him, a 9 year old, in charge of his 3 infant siblings, alone for a week or two straight. And no one had any idea. If he hadn't taught his siblings to read they would have not learned until they were adults. It's no wonder he rebelled and then was a complete and utter disaster as an adult point also note, his parents were weird, they thought they were more powerful than the state, and so when his dad didn't get his way with the state about birth certificates he rage monstered at them, and they told him no, he isn't God. So, since his children were all born at home, none of them had birth certificates or social security numbers until they were of legal age. And he was furious when my buddy got his without talking about it first, like violently angry, like they didn't exist legally, never went to school, nothing my friend's sister got her high school diploma finally when she was 22 and is now quite successful point however, there were other issues. In fact my friend was named after his dad and when he managed to get a job his father insisted that he leave his middle name out and his dad would take his checks and cash them. It was a serious what the fuck, until we were older, and no one believed us, my folks and his folks were best friends and my parents had no idea point, when people say they had controlling parents, or abusive parents, I'm always like, you have no idea, cause that's what comes to mind point what's worse is, that until I was more self aware, I thought this was normal point fast forward 30 years, and we're still friends, we don't talk much, but that's because I can no longer handle his crazy, but that's a different story entirely. My family poops big. Maybe it's genetic, maybe it's our diet, but everyone births giant logs of crap. If anyone has laid a mega poop, you know that sometimes it won't flush. It lays across the hole in the bottom of the bowl and the vortex of draining water merely gives it a spin as it mocks you point growing up. This was a common enough occurrence that our family had a poop knife. It was an old rusty kitchen knife that hung on a nail in the laundry room, only to be used for that purpose. It was normal to walk through the hallway and have someone call out hey, can you get me the poop knife, I thought it was standard kit. You have your plunger, your toilet brush, and your poop knife point fast forward to 22. It's been a day or two between poops, and I'm over at my friend's house. My friend was a local dealer and always had guests over, because you can't buy weed without sitting on your ass and sampling it for an hour. I excuse myself and lay a gigantic turd. I look down and see that it's a sideways one, so I crack the door and call out for my friend. He arrives and I ask him for his poop knife, my, what, your, poop knife, I say, I need to use it, please, what, the fuck is a poop knife, obviously, he has one, but maybe he calls it by a more delicate name, a fecal cleaver, a dung divider, a guano glaive, I explain what it is I want, and why I want it point he starts giggling, then laughing, then lots of people start laughing. It turns out, the music stopped and everyone heard my pleas through the door. 
It also turns out that none of them had poop knives. It was just my faked up family with their faked up bowels. FML point I told this to my wife last night, who was amused and horrified at the same time. It turns out that she did not know what a poop knife was and had been using the old rusty knife hanging in the utility closet as a basic utility knife. Thankfully she didn't cook with it, but used it to open Amazon boxes she will be getting her own utility knife now. My mom and dad, whenever we had guests over for get togethers, or a party for someone, they would cook enough food for them, and then some, so we could relax and have fun. If it was a birthday we would make cakes, if possible or commission a local cake artist ourselves. Basically any birthday and important celebration was turned up to 100. Even if it's just work friends my mom had point one of my closest friends I made in 2013 told me his little brother had his 12th birthday. I was like whoa you guys must have had a big party for him. He said nope they could only afford to get a small cake and do a small day celebration and watch a movie they rented at a red box. I got upset. I never had a birthday like that, so I stepped up. Told him right after work get his little brothers and his parents and whoever wanted to come from his family around us and we were gonna have a lane actual party at my place. Now short notice I called up a taco truck business to make tacos and rice and beans and all kinds of stuff for a party of 25. Then I got a lady I knew since I was 18 to make me an emergency cake for the same night. It was 10 a.m. Him and his family come with 20 then it turned 34 and the taco truck was like we got this and pulled more food from their truck no charge. The birthday was great. And I did that five times that same year at my place for every single person in his family. Expensive? Best $200 I spent every time point after the second time my friend asked me in front of his parents why I would spend so much on his family if we only knew each other for 4 months. His mom hit the back of his head. It is considered Mexican hospitality from Chihuahua. All my major family came from there and went to El Paso and California. His parents understood I carried that tradition. I still do the same for them when they need it. I may not have an apartment anymore, but I still pay for them or share payment when we do birthdays at his house. As a cop, I thought it was normal to eye down black PPL until they feel awkward and want to leave my immediate vicinity in town as a matter of fact or sometimes flash them my badge to warn them I'm watching. However, my ex-girlfriends were so turned off by my behavior that I have not been able to marry at all. I think I'll stop behaving this way in hopes of transforming my personality so that I can attract a proper loving woman instead of the usual trash intent to attract. Maybe if I didn't behave this way my entire 20s and 30s, I wouldn't be a single 40 something year old white man. The women I tend to attract are Trump supporters, not that there is anything wrong with that, but they tend to cheat on me quite often. Maybe if I was a proper decent man I'd attract a proper decent person to woman and have a loving family together. I wish I wasn't a hater at all but this is what my job did to me, since it is culturally expected for us to run minorities out of town or keep tabs on them, since they are not ones to shoot the sheet with us at our backyard BBQS and such. Anyway, I didn't realize this was normal until woman stopped liking me and I got older and lonelier than ever before. TLDR I hate being a cop and I wish I studied in college to become a programmer or businessman or any other respectable occupation I don't know about. Two things, eggs with ketchup, I still don't see this as a weird thing point my sisters and I went canoeing with a group of friends once and we all stopped at a restaurant to have breakfast before we headed out. My sisters and I all ordered scrambled eggs with our meal and when it came we put ketchup on our eggs. We were probably with 6 other people and they all stopped doing what they were doing and just stared at us with a very weird expression on their faces. We all stopped too and looked back and asked them, what? One of them asked why in the world we were putting ketchup on our eggs. We replied that eggs are kind of bland by themselves so the ketchup makes them taste better. They replied, of course they are bland. They are eggs. As if that explained their reaction? If anything it just reinforced the reason why we were putting ketchup on them in the first place. Grilled cheese with pickles my dad always pulled open his grilled cheese before it cooled too much and would put slices of dill pickle in it and close it back up. 
The tartness of the pickles with the salty savory of the buttered bread and cheese tastes great together. When I first did this in front of my, now, husband, he thought it was the weirdest thing ever. He then proceeded to squirt a bunch of ketchup next to his grilled cheese and dipped it in that, which I found to be extremely disgusting. Lol I'm still sad that my kids take after him on that one. XD. My dad was pretty strange when my sisters and I were growing up and so there were multiple things that he came up with such as songs and saying etc. Point. But one thing he did, and therefore something we as kids did, was when one of us got hurt or we got in trouble for example he would do this wave of the hand that's hard to explain. It's not like a wave goodbye it's a curvature of the hand at the knuckle to create a right angle then the fingers bend making the hand look like a nar shape then pulls up to a flat palm. The hand movement is a smooth motion and this wave was usually done more than once point paired with it was a verbal sound of way away away oh. Now this wave could be done on its own without the sounds, so that if our mum or grandparent was telling us off he or one of my siblings could stand out of view and do this wave, sometimes coupled with the mouthing of the words, without also getting in trouble as this was a way of taunting us or laughing at us. It was pretty funny, and I've always loved the little quirks that he came up with but it just seems so strange trying to explain it to anyone else, because as far as I know it's a completely made up wave and set of words I've had to explain myself a couple times though as I have slipped up in the past and do the gesture to someone who has no idea what on earth I'm doing. I do usually catch myself on it though. Anyone mention the poop knife story yet? Edit. Copper pasta below my family poops big. Maybe it's genetic, maybe it's our diet, but everyone births giant logs of crap. If anyone has laid a mega poop, you know that sometimes it won't flush. It lays across the hole in the bottom of the bowl and the vortex of draining water merely gives it a spin as it mocks you point growing up. This was a common enough occurrence that our family had a poop knife. It was an old rusty kitchen knife that hung on a nail in the laundry room, only to be used for that purpose. It was normal to walk through the hallway and have someone call out hey, can you get me the poop knife, I thought it was standard kit. You have your plunger, your toilet brush, and your poop knife point fast forward to 22. It's been a day or two between poops, and I'm over at my friend's house. My friend was a local dealer and always had guests over, because you can't buy weed without sitting on your ass and sampling it for an hour. I excuse myself and lay a gigantic turd. I look down and see that it's a sideways one, so I crack the door and call out for my friend. He arrives and I ask him for his poop knife. My. What? Your. Poop knife. I say. I need to use it. Please what the fuck is a poop knife? Obviously. He has one, but maybe he calls it by a more delicate name. A fecal cleaver? A dung divider? A guano glaive? I explain what it is I want, and why I want it point he starts giggling. Then laughing. Then lots of people start laughing. It turns out, the music stopped and everyone heard my pleas through the door. It also turns out that none of them had poop knives, it was just my faked up family with their faked up bowels. FML point I told this to my wife last night, who was amused and horrified at the same time. It turns out that she did not know what a poop knife was and had been using the old rusty knife hanging in the utility closet as a basic utility knife. Thankfully she didn't cook with it, but used it to open Amazon boxes she will be getting her own utility knife now. Edit. Common question. Why was this not in the bathroom instead of the laundry room? Answer. We only had one poop knife, and the laundry room was central to all three bathrooms. I have no idea why we didn't have three poop knives. All I know is that we didn't. We had the one. Possibly because my father was notoriously cheap about the weirdest things. So yes, we shared our poop knife. Growing up, it was me, my younger sister and my mom. She was a single mom raising us brats while going to school and trying to give us everything we needed. With that being said, our mom was a grumpy soul who was very rough around the edges, loud, and had a voice like an 80 year old smoker. Thinking about it now, she was probably just fed up and didn't initially expect her life to be the way it was. It really freaked out our friends, and if we ever hosted play at slash sleepovers at our house, without fail our friends would tell us our mom scares them cause they think she's mean. 
We apologized over a million times before the age of 10 for our mom's way of character. Was normal for us, not for anyone else. Point we were living in a socially funded complex apartment with a bunch of other middle low class white families and a lot of the parents living there used to give my mom the cold shoulder. Mom would tell us nobody likes her cause she's a single mom. So she never wanted to ponder around the neighborhood looking for us if it was time to come home for dinner or anything else. My sister and I would be like blocks from our house playing with our friends in the neighborhood and all of a sudden, mid barbers and we hear our mom at the top her lungs scream our names. My sister and I would look at each other and scream together yeah. And following a slight pause, we would hear come home now, dinner time. Like screaming a full on conversation to each other from like a kilometer away, our friends were always like your mom is so loud. Mexico can probably hear her calling you guys to come home, sometimes. Even, our mom would call us, and we actually couldn't hear her calling us, and our next door neighbors would come, and find us themselves, and be like you guys, your mom has been calling for you 10 minutes, and walk back home. That was trouble for us though. My whole family's just kinda crazy, we all do stupid shit with each other, and weird shit always happens around slash with us, and there's a ton of examples, but at our family gatherings which are usually birthdays and holidays, we always think of some dumb game or activity that everyone takes place in, all the kids, all the adults, everyone, and it's never normal, not like hide and go seek or tag it's always something made up and weird. Like for example, one time at a thanksgiving, get together we all took off our socks and turned the to ceiling fans my aunt has in her living room on and started throwing our socks at them. And if you landed one on a fan blade you got points and we all got super competitive and started starting rival risen sheet and another time at my younger cousin's birthday we took turns putting on a ninja turtles mask and a unicorn horn that strapped onto your head and then everyone else got rings not jewelry rings but big plastic rings and we threw the rings at that person's head until they were all gone and we saw if anyone could get the rings to land on the unicorn horn and we always end up doing something like this but the unicorn horn day i took pictures of people with the mask and horn on and then sent one to my best friend and ever since then she and my other friends have gone on and on about how crazy my family is and how boring things are and i got so used to my family being the way it is that until i sent my friend that photo i never really realized that that's not normal for me, it's not necessarily what my family did, but what my family didn't point context. I have one half sister, 9 years older than me, and both of my parents were in their 40s. When I was born point I grew up basically without any rules. No bedtime, I could walk slash bike around the neighborhood alone anytime I wanted to. I started staying home alone when I was like 7 used the oven when I was 8, no rules about not having food in my bedroom, I had a lot of friends with that rule, etc. You name it, I could probably do it without consequences. I also never had a curfew and didn't start sharing location on my phone with my mom until I went to college. For safety purposes, I was constantly shocked when I went to my friends houses growing up and they would say things like oh we can't have food in our bedrooms. So we have to eat in the kitchen, or wait we have to tell my mom we are going to the store before we leave. You know, mostly normal house rules many people over the years have been shocked at how relaxed my family is, and I really have no explanation for it. Possibly because my parents are older, so they grew up during a time when kids would just kinda roam free around town on their bikes and be home for dinner. Possibly because I was a good kid who never got into trouble, I didn't mess around with boys in high school, got really good grades, had lots of friends and things to do. Most notably though, both sets of my grandparents are way older than my friends, so since I was 8 one or both of my parents has been caring for at least one of my grandparents. I think they just got busy with their own lives and figured I'm a good enough kid to handle myself. Point I think I really benefited from that no rule system. Of course, the world is a lot scarier today than it was even 12 years ago, but at the time there wasn't much to be concerned about for me. I learned a lot of street smarts, people skills, handy work, how to be inventive, cooking skills, etc. My friends like to tell me I'm the dad of my friend group because I know a little bit about everything. So, thanks for releasing me to the wild, parents. 
Even if my friends thought it was weird that I could eat in my bedroom. I'm currently in a co-living arrangement, so I've never been in this close proximity with this many strangers before, and the kind of, I don't know, poverty or immigrant mentality gets a way more shocked reaction than the actual uncommon, horrible, or downright bizarre things that happened during my childhood. Then again, I'm not the only person in that household who grew up in a religion that looks more like a cult when you're outside. For example, wearing shoes until they get holes in them, and then continuing to use the comfy slip-on ones. As slippers. The fact that I'm a grown adult wearing hand-me-downs from when my sister was in middle school 15 years ago, the fact that my favorite comforter is both falling apart because I got it 20 years ago and was found by my dad in a former frat house he was remodeling and we washed it really hot, my willingness to pick clothes up out of a mud puddle and take them home and wash them. Because I correctly identified them as being actually pretty nice. The fact that I offered to take people driving around college neighborhoods looking for wooden furniture and light fixtures and mirrors and such when the students all moved out, cutting the moldy bits off of cheese or bread, and eating the unmoldy bits, and then explaining oh no, this is one of the foods you can do that with, it's not like jam, where the mold goes further than the surface because I guess, having a mental list of what? Foods you can and can't safely eat non-moldy parts of. Using the phrase free venison to refer to a deer hit by a car in the previous few minutes and explaining that I was totally serious and they could just call fish and wildlife so they wouldn't have trouble having it outside of deer season and so on point and it's not that I'm perpetually broke, I have a working class job and when I can't stay in budget it's almost always medical expenses but that kind of practical common sense. Stuff is why I usually can stay on track with my budget. It took me until I was around 25 or so, maybe even later to realize that a shouting is not really a normal speaking volume and taken as aggressive, particularly in discussions seen as offensive or as weakness and inability to lay out an argument keeping in mind I'm a rather petite blonde woman. This always takes people off guard and yeah unpleasant for others. I never understood people's reactions to me point in my family we just always always shouted I suppose. Full on not hurtful stuff, we just speak at an insane volume it turns out what for me irregular speaking voices is totally out of line in regular families so bizarre to me to this day I always though it is pretty much linked being half Italian and German granted we do speak louder and these languages do sound more aggressive than other languages slash cultures and more direct, but to this extent, turns out is not normal to shout at. Everyone, and yeah, I'm still struggling talking in a regular voice to this day, I actually cannot hear the difference between shouting and talking. Particularly in discussion point until recently just thought people are super overly sensitive, or contrived, learned it through a couple of relationships ending, and job meetings sometimes getting out of hand, because people react unexpectedly to my argument, I also was actually unable to whisper until I was like 16, still weird to me. It just is not a volume ever used in my family or surroundings for me shouting was talking, and talking was whispering, and yeah, I did not get people using lower volumes than that, HM. My mom never stopped playing that kids game where you pretend your toes are pigs. Over the years, the pigs developed personalities, right pigs back quote biff, bludgeon, left pigs into submission, left pigs back quote burrow between the sofa cushions to escape. Periodically right pigs kill left pigs, and left pigs have to be revived. Sometimes the pigs thrash so hard they throw off their pig furs, socks, and they cry until I go and retrieve them and put them back on. The pigs hate my mom, they often talk about how fat and lazy she is. Also the pigs worship my backquote pigs, whom they call Irish dancer pigs, aptly named, since I'm a dancer. They beef each other to try to impress Irish dancer pigs. They bring Irish dancer pigs gifts, usually bits of fluff, candy wrappers, etc. And they back quote pet Irish dancer pigs, massaging them. It makes me really uncomfortable. Left pigs sometimes even burrow between me and the sofa, including between my legs. I ask her to stop, and the pigs get offended and buff each other more. 
I've talked to her about it in her human form, and she says I need to learn to take a joke I stopped playing a long years ago when my friends told me it was weird, but to this day my mom sometimes won't talk to me, except through the pigs, even, and especially, when it's a really serious topic. One time I refused to talk to the pigs, and they started screaming about how I must hate them, and then my mom locked herself in her bedroom for two days. I think she used to play this game with her sister when they were small, and now that there's family drama and they're estranged, my mom does the pigs as kind of a coping mechanism. I think left pigs represent her, right pigs represent my aunt, and their reverence for Irish dancer pigs represents how she's given a lot up to look after me, and so she feels justified to live vicariously through me. Point at it, typus. My family poops big. Maybe it's genetic, maybe it's our diet, but everyone births giant logs of crap. If anyone has laid a mega poop, you know that sometimes it won't flush. It lays across the hole in the bottom of the bowl and the vortex of draining water merely gives it a spin as it mocks you. Growing up, this was a common enough occurrence that our family had a poop knife. It was an old rusty kitchen knife that hung on a nail in the laundry room, only to be used for that purpose. It was normal to walk through the hallway and have someone call out hey, can you get me the poop knife? I thought it was standard kit. You have your plunger, your toilet brush, and your poop knife. Fast forward to 22. It's been a day or two between poops, and I'm over at my friend's house. My friend was a local dealer and always had guests over, because you can't buy weed without sitting on your ass and sampling it for an hour. I excuse myself and lay a gigantic turd. I look down and see that it's a sideways one, so I crack the door and call out for my friend. He arrives and I ask him for his poop knife. My what? Your poop knife, I say. I need to use it. Please. What the fuck is a poop knife? Obviously he has one, but maybe he calls it by a more delicate name. A fecal cleaver? A dung divider? A guano glaive? I explain what it is I want and why I want it. He starts giggling. Then laughing. Then lots of people start laughing. It turns out, the music stopped and everyone heard my pleas through the door. It also turns out that none of them had poop knives. It was just my faked up family with their faked up bowels. FML. I told this to my wife last night, who was amused and horrified at the same time. It turns out that she did not know what a poop knife was and had been using the old rusty knife hanging in the utility closet as a basic utility knife. Thankfully she didn't cook with it, but used it to open Amazon boxes. She will be getting her own utility knife now. Edit. Common question. Why was this not in the bathroom instead of the laundry room? Answer. We only had one poop knife, and the laundry room was central to all three bathrooms. I have no idea why we didn't have three poop knives. All I know is that we didn't. We had the one. Possibly because my father was notoriously cheap about the weirdest things. So yes, we shared our poop knife. Well this is long and grandma will suck it took me a while to realize that how I was raised was horrible like I knew it was horrible, but I still excuse some of the things we weren't allowed to have locked doors be out past 3pm put toilet paper in the toilet, flush the toilet eat eat without a plate or something under us no shoes in the house or rooms have to be clean we couldn't visit family we visited for growing up my mom couldn't eat dinner until my stepdad ate dinner. We couldn't have the TV loud we could only go to McDonald's we never went to any other fast food or restaurants or movie theaters only one at McDonald's Dollar Tree I couldn't even go out and do school activities. If we saw someone that wasn't white in public we would be punished for it. I was called half breed and put down and wasn't allowed to see my own ad everything had to be clean no message no clutter anything we would be in trouble we had. No cable no internet we had like 20 channels. He would listen in on our calls he listened in on the rooms. When we talked he was very abusive drunk every night singing loud we couldn't sleep sometimes he would hold us as we slept he would preach. When he was drunk despite being horrible and racist. When he taught me to drive he expected me to know how to drive he didn't teach me to use the brake push gas or the wheel or nothing. Like he expected me to know as soon as I got in and he would cost. Me if I got it wrong now I could stay up how late I want I can eat what I want I can open the fridge raider and I get yelled at I can open up other things and I get yelled at and I will be okay sorry there's no punctuation and grammar is bad. 
when I met my boyfriend we watched a movie together where there was an overweight mom and I talked shit about her weight and he just got really silent and looked at me. His mom is overweight and truly the sweetest person in the world. I didn't know that at the time and he never said anything about it to me, but the look in his eyes made me realize that that was not normal or okay to do point my mom has always talked so much shit about overweight people. If we were in a car and passed a fat person on the street she would call them in it and talk about how ugly they were. She bullied me from age 11 until way into my 20s about my weight and used to slap my hands away from the food at dinner if I reached for seconds. She would tell me how, when she was my age men would look after her on the street but no one would look after someone like me. I once objected to her usual treatment of me at dinner while my sister had her boyfriend over and I stopped eating in protest. I just sat back with my arms crossed for the entire dinner and dessert and my mom would laugh uncomfortably and sarcastically say wow what a nice atmosphere and then afterwards her and my dad scolded me for ruining the mood point as an adult I no longer judge overweight people. I look at them the way I look at anyone. I also look at my own body with love where I used to hate myself and felt I was ugly and disgusting no matter what. I see pictures of myself when I was between 11 and 20 and I was never fat. Not even close. I was perfectly normal, but my mom never allowed me to feel good about myself, and I guess I was slowly turning into a version of her when I met my boyfriend. Forever grateful that I met him. He makes me a better person. Eating everything out of cups. We ate literally everything out of cups. Ice cream, soup, noodles, cereal etc. I mean it is so practical to just eat out of cups, they have handles, it's the perfect size for small meals etc. I didn't realize it was weird until I was eating at a friend's house and I was like expecting to eat out of cups and then my friend's mom gave me a plate full of food and I was like what the fuck this is so much food and why is it on a plate? My friend then told me that it wasn't normal to eat out of cups. I mean when we were eating at a restaurant it was normal to eat from plates, but I just thought it was more polite to eat from plates. Edit, there are some others, that I forgot eating everything with applesauce, chicken nuggets, pancakes, fries, noodles, pizza et not eating together we almost never ate dinner together, and never ate lunch or breakfast together we all just went into the kitchen, made some food, put it in a cup, and go eating it in our room reading together. I'm my family we have this tradition of reading together we just sit there like 2 hours and either read for ourselves or read out loud for everyone. Not watching TV on our TV we could only watch like Netflix and stuff in winter we sat outside on the balcony with like 20 blankets and pillows and read or talk or just sit there. When it was not that cold I would sleep on the balcony sometimes sleeping on the floor my brother would fall asleep on the floor and our parents were fine with it so we, I developed the habit to just fall asleep on the floor doing yoga and workouts together my whole family always did like workouts or yoga together 4 times a week and if we wanted to we could join. Sarcasm. I talk with my mother really sarcastically, is that a word, and people would always say I am mean fighting with my brother, and then 5 minutes later telling him I love him, and helping with his homework, and then fighting again talking in 4 different languages. I talk to my mother always in a mix of 4 different languages, English, German, French and Spanish and sometimes Chinese, I can only speak English, German and French fluently, even though my mother didn't raise me bilingual or something. But we can both speak a little Spanish and Chinese, so the way we talk is a mix of all these. I always confuse people because I accidentally say a Chinese or Spanish word and they just like at me like what the fuck are you talking about okay there are more, but the list would be way too long if I talked about everything. I didn't realize normal kids didn't have to walk on eggshells around their parents I grew up with parents who would blow up for the smallest things and go on huge rants that lasted for hours or even days. This onslaught of yelling, screaming, personal insults, and humiliation was followed by weeks of the silent treatment, angry glares, and slammed doors. Then, after that was all over, they would get angry that I wasn't talking to them and take me out to eat, where they'd act like nothing ever happened and I was in the wrong for not loving mommy and daddy anymore. 
I started dating my boyfriend around a year and a half ago, and by this time I'd learned that most of what my parents did was abusive, but it still caught me way off guard when his mom asked him to do something, and he didn't do it. He told me she will understand. I've been working all day, and it can be done tomorrow. I literally broke into tears trying to convince my boyfriend to just do it, so his mom won't be mad. I begged him to just do what she said, so he didn't get yelled at point his mom came home, asked if it was done, he said no, he was tired, and would do it in the morning. His mom just said okay, make sure it gets done tomorrow. And she walked away. I knew his mom wouldn't yell at him, but I still had that fear from my parents ingrained into me. I don't know if this is normal or not, and I certainly don't do this to others, but my dad used to and still does take pictures of me, but like all the time without consent and I just say nothing, because I've tried to say stop, but he doesn't listen. I'm 14 so I don't know I feel like it messed up my brain to think what's normal and what's not, because I don't know what is or what isn't. Like my brain is messed up, because of my dad point I feel like that's what caused my social anxiety, because I'd be walking to school, and he'd take pictures of me in the car, but like secretly, and I'd catch him sometimes. Like also, he'd embarrass me in public, because he'd make, like I don't know even how to explain it, but just weird things like clap loudly or something weird, and I'd turn red in public so now I don't go out point, and he also put like a recorder or something in my mom's car, so it like records whatever my mom says in her car without him there, and he like, controls her like needs, to know wherever she is, and he doesn't let her go with friends, she can now, because she lies to him. So she can go out with her friends. And like he always lies and somehow I find it okay. I don't but it's like he's manipulating me to thinking he loves me. And that this is okay what he's doing. Because he buys me nice things. Oh and the other day like. They're both separated right. But he came to my house. I live with my mom. And she was out shopping. And so I was home alone. And he came. And he saw a picture of like my mom's cousins and it's basically like a frame with a photo of my mom's family. And there's like a wedding photo of them, not my mom but her cousins, and they're like married and stuff. And he basically just took it out, the photo, he stole it. And my mom asked where was the photo, since he obviously took it like why, would a 14 year old take it? So obviously he took it, and he said that he doesn't have it point um I don't know if this is normal so, like I just brush it off. But like these little things happen, like I don't know once a week or something. I was isolated and homeschooled my entire childhood into high school years. I was raised on a mining property. When we moved to another town, I was only allowed to go to church. We went to church in Camden, California. It was a percent 98% black church. I'm white. Like reflect the sun white lol. But I had no idea anything was different from my skin color and all these really great people in my youth church. They were never mean, and I had so much fun. It never crossed my mind. My parents were the same about anybody. Race wasn't a thing. Just friends or people who weren't friends. I was only around my parents and my sister my entire childhood. My mother got sick, and we had lost everything. We had to stay with my grandparents I had only met briefly once in my life. My mother was terminally ill with cancer. A drive with my grandfather through the town we were in. He started in talking all these weird terms about the blacks in town. I also was not raised where we had a TV when I was young, so I had no clues to what racism was. I was looking at him dumbfounded. He continued in a mocking and joking manner until I finally asked him grandpa, what are you talking about? He said it's funny, and tried to explain, but without a reference point, or being exposed to people being racist I just didn't understand, and said not in anger, but complete innocence I don't think it's funny. I was 16 years old. He actually realized I had no clue, he actually realized something, because tears well had in his eyes I don't think it's funny either. I'm sorry. It was that day I found out people look at each other, and can hate someone, because they were a different color of skin. It was also that day my grandfather stopped acting hateful towards blacks and stood up for others. It was a good thing loving others was not normal. I have appreciated this one thing my parents got right. And to this day, I still have no real clue why anyone is a racist from any race. 
doesn't make a bit of sense to me. This is not my story, but one of another editor's. It was told in response to a similar question. I've tried to go back and find it in the past, but was not able to. I'll do my best to retell. It's worth it. We'll call the original author, Dave Point. So Dave's family had a unique way of dealing with a clogged toilet. Instead of using a plunger, like most people do, Dave's family had what they called the poop knife. Pretty direct and to the point. Dave described the poop knife to be essentially nothing more than a glorified butter knife. The poop knife hung in a utility type room just outside the bathroom door, where it was easily accessible. The whole family knew its use and that's just the way it was. No big deal, right? Dave was a young adult and still lived with his parents. He had a girlfriend. They had been spending a lot of time together. Dave had been at the girlfriend's family home. As you spend more time together, it is inevitable that you will get more comfortable with each other and need to use the restroom. He did. It was unmanageable. He needed to flush the toilet. It wouldn't. He looked around. Under the sink. In laundry room. In the garage. It wasn't anywhere. So embarrassingly, Dave had to do what every person reads at their girlfriend's home. He asked her discreetly. Where is the poop knife? She. Pause the what? Dave. Tried to keep their voices down. I clogged the toilet. I need the poop knife. Now, I don't recall, or the remainder of the story wasn't told, but the basis of the story has stayed with me in such a way that it's a bit of a joke now in my house. Dave is grown now and has his own house, where I believe he uses a plunger. I hope Dave is doing well and sees this to offer some color commentary. My family poops big. Maybe it's genetic, maybe it's our diet, but everyone births giant logs of crap. If anyone has laid a mega poop, you know that sometimes it won't flush. It lays across the hole in the bottom of the bowl and the vortex of draining water merely gives it a spin as it mocks you point growing up. This was a common enough occurrence that our family had a poop knife. It was an old rusty kitchen knife that hung on a nail in the laundry room, only to be used for that purpose. It was normal to walk through the hallway and have someone call out hey, can you get me the poop knife? I thought it was standard kit. You have your plunger, your toilet brush, and your poop knife point fast forward to 22. It's been a day or two between poops, and I'm over at my friend's house. My friend was a local dealer and always had guests over, because you can't buy weed without sitting on your ass and sampling it for an hour. I excuse myself and lay a gigantic turd. I look down and see that it's a sideways one, so I crack the door and call out for my friend. He arrives and I ask him for his poop knife, my, what, your, poop knife, I say, I need to use it, please, what, the fuck is a poop knife, obviously, he has one, but maybe he calls it by a more delicate name, a fecal cleaver, a dung divider, a guano glaive, I explain what it is I want, and why I want it point he starts giggling, then laughing, then lots of people start laughing. It turns out, the music stopped and everyone heard my pleas through the door. It also turns out that none of them had poop knives, it was just my faked up family with their faked up bowels. FML point I told this to my wife last night, who was amused and horrified at the same time. It turns out, that she did not know what a poop knife was, and had been using the old rusty knife hanging in the utility closet as a basic utility knife. Thankfully she didn't cook with it, but used it to open Amazon boxes she will be getting her own utility knife now. Edit. Common question. Why was this not in the bathroom instead of the laundry room? Answer. We only had one poop knife, and the laundry room was central to all three bathrooms. I have no idea why we didn't have three poop knives. All I know is that we didn't. We had the one. Possibly because my father was notoriously cheap about the weirdest things. So yes, we shared our poop knife. 